Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the suspect in the University of North Carolina's Charlotte campus shooting is in custody with charges pending. And the suspect in the synagogue shooting in San Diego may face severe penalties. Plus, two people charged with kidnapping a girl and hiding her away in a U-Haul. We're back in a Knox County courtroom yesterday. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 459 on Wednesday, May the 1st. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News This Morning. Two beautiful days in a row, and hopefully we're going to go for a third. Let's bring Brandon in this morning to give you a better rundown. Brandon, good morning. It's going to be a fairly nice day. Good morning to you, Will, and happy May. Welcome to May. May 1st this morning, and we're going to see kind of a similar end to April, or a similar beginning to May that we saw at the end of April there with some drier conditions. Back the rain chances down just a little bit, at least during the daytime hours. Let's take a look above Buffalo Mountain this morning and not a lot to speak of up that way this morning. No real fog issues or anything like that. A few clouds around just like yesterday morning. But the thing you're going to notice is the temperature is 70 right now. Monticello 72 Middlesboro close to 70 Prestonsburg Pikeville Logan a little cooler. Some of those sheltered valleys hazard. We're at 59 and Harlan is at 61. The almanac for today back to 85 for a forecast. I only got into the low 80s yesterday thanks to some cloud cover. 88 is the record at Jackson set back on this day in 2000. 2007. And again, those temperatures are going to soar quickly into the 80 degree range by lunchtime. I have the full forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Will. All righty, Brandon. Thank you. Two people are dead and four others are injured this morning after a gunman opened fire on the campus of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. The suspect is in custody with charges pending. CBS's Laura Podesta has details on what happened on the last day of class. A student armed with a pistol opened fire at a North Carolina university yesterday afternoon. This is the worst day in the history of UNC Charlotte. We've lost two members of our community. We have four injured students. As students ran away from the gunfire at the University of North Carolina Charlotte, campus police officers ran into the building and arrested the suspect. Our officers actions definitely save lives. There's no doubt about that. Those who were inside did what they could to stay safe. One of the students there wrapped a belt around the door so that no one could get in. They barricaded it and stuck something um, in it so it wouldn't slide open. As the shooting unfolded, the school sent out increasingly urgent alerts. The campus was on lockdown and there was an active shooter and then literally like 30 seconds later they said that shots were actually fired and then like 10 seconds later they said that people were shot and then like another couple minutes they said that people were actually killed. Police identified 22 year old Tristan Andrew Terrell as the suspect. They searched his home last night. We will take a look, a hard look at this entire situation to find out what happened and how it happened and things that can be prevented. Sources tell CBS affiliate WBTV in Charlotte, Terrell had withdrawn from all but one class. Laura Podesta, CBS News. There will be a candlelight vigil on campus tonight. The school has canceled final exams through Sunday. The suspect in the synagogue shooting in San Diego may face the death penalty. This is synagogue shooting suspect 19 year old John Ernest showing no remorse facing a judge for the first time. According to the district attorney, his court appointed attorney entered a not guilty plea on his behalf. He is accused of Saturday's deadly shooting at the, Sh the Shabbat of Poway synagogue. Defendant expressed his intent to harm Jews. When the target of violence is an entire religion, race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation, the victim pool becomes very large. Ernest is being charged with one count of murder and three counts of attempted murder and one count of arson from a separate incident. The murder charges come with hate crime allegations, which could mean harsher penalties if Ernest is convicted. Calls for a military uprising in Venezuela have led to massive clashes in the streets. Gunfire erupted as government forces clashed with supporters of opposition leader Juan Guado near a bridge in Carcacas. In a social media post, Guado called the military to join Operacion Libertad, an uprising to topple Nicolas Maduro's government. Guado, Guado blames Maduro for the country's economic and humanitarian crisis, but Maduro refuses to step down.
Well, today marks 311 days since Tyler North went missing. He was last seen driving home from work in Leslie County. His family since then has not seen or heard from him. They have no leads, only rumors people keep telling them. Kentucky State Police, who are investigating, say they are on cold tracks too. His family says as they near a year since they last saw him, they are begging for someone to come forward. Tyler was sweet. He had a humble spirit. He would have done anything in this world for anybody and without any questions asked. If you have any information on where Tyler may be, you are asked to call Kentucky State Police Post 13 in Hazard at 606-435-6069. Two people charged with kidnapping a girl and hiding her away in a U-Haul were back in a Knox County courtroom yesterday morning. A third person remains in Ohio awaiting extradition. Their case is now in the hands of a grand jury. A judge denied Tiffany Cheek and Michael Nason any kind of ease in getting out of jail. As police say, they, along with Carl Hickman, kidnapped the teenager. Nason is accused of raping her in the U-Haul she was locked in as they drove her from Corbin to Cincinnati. Sheriff Mike Smith says they could make more arrests. We obviously want to get to the bottom of it and see if it, it's uh, like a web or anything out there like that that, that we thoroughly investigate and, and apprehend everyone that we can apprehend with this. The Knox County Sheriff says they are getting help from multiple other agencies in their investigation. Well, thank you for getting your day started with us right here on Mountain News this morning. It's gonna be May. That's the joke that works its way around the internet every April. But now that May has arrived, we will show you how people are celebrating. A few clouds kept us from reaching our full heat potential yesterday, but I think we'll get there today. I'll tell you, we're expecting to start May in about three minutes.